All right, let's look at sketching f of x from f prime. Okay, I'm going to go through four examples. Again, all of these examples are where you're looking, you're looking at the graph of the derivative and trying to sketch the original function. Okay, let's take a, take a pause here and let's look at these helpful hints. I think these are kind of the five key things I would focus on. Where the derivative is equal to zero, that's typically when you're, you're looking at the maxes and mins of your function. Remind yourself that the slope of the derivative, meaning the slope of the graph you're looking at, well, that's the second derivative, right? That's the derivative of the derivative. If the derivative is positive, that means the function's increasing. That's the definition of what a positive derivative is, right? A positive rate of change. And how do you know when your derivative is positive? Well, you're looking at the graph of the derivative. So when the derivative is above the x-axis, that means the function better be increasing. When the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing, meaning if the graph is below the x-axis, that means the derivative is negative because you're looking at the graph of the derivative. And then if you change it from a positive to a negative slope on the graph indicates a point of inflection because the slope is the second derivative on the graph. So changing from a positive to a negative second derivative indicates a point of inflection. Okay, this one's really boring, and then the next three are kind of more interesting. This is boring because if you analyze this, f prime is just some positive constant. So what does that tell you? Well, if f prime is just a positive constant, what do you know has to have happen? What do you know about the function? Well, the function has to be just a line. Not only is it a line, but it, it has to be a positive line, right? This is like uh, the derivative is always four. Well, what do you think your function is? Well, y equals four x or something, okay? So whatever this slope is, you know then the, the corresponding function has to look something like that. This has a certain value, okay? Let's say that this is five, well then this has to have a slope of five. You're not really sure of the y-intercept. Again, this line could be like that, it could be up here, it could be up here, but this slope has to equal this derivative. If the derivative is constant, that means that f of x is some line. There's no zeros, there's no maxes or mins, stuff like that. This one's a little bit boring um, because you're just not gonna see too many graphs where the derivative is just a constant. Okay, so let's go down here to more interesting things. The first thing I want to point out is my first hint. Where the derivative is equal to zero right here, that has to correspond, in this case, to a max or a min because we have a changing of a derivative. The derivative is negative and the derivative is positive. Remember, we're looking at the graph of the derivative. The derivative is below here, this is negative, and then this region, the derivative is positive. So what is this, a max or a min? Well, if you go from a negative derivative to a positive derivative, that means the function is going down and then going up. This has to be some minimum value. So I'm just going to write min there. Right? I know that that zero has to be a min. So put it anywhere you want. You don't really know where it is on the graph. I'm going to slap it right there. Why not? All I know is at this particular x value, that exact x value, I have to have a minimum. And then, okay, so the slope of this is the second derivative. Well, the slope of this is just some positive number. So that means the second derivative is positive. That must mean it's smiling. So we know that it's smiling. We know where a minimum occurs, which also agrees with the smile. And what do we know? We know that the derivative is negative here and then positive here. So that means the function is then decreasing and then increasing, but what do we know? Look, everything matches up. We know that the minimum occurs right there. We know that the derivative is negative, and then the derivative is positive. We know that the slope of the derivative, which is the concavity, right? we know that the second derivative is always positive, right? That's the same thing as saying that the second derivative uh, of all, all the values are greater than zero. And we know that's a min, so that's gotta be the function. And you're like, oh, wait a second, that doesn't make sense, right? If f of x, if f prime, excuse me, is some linear function, 
And what do we know about the actual function? The function has to be quadratic. Has to be. Take any line you want. Any y equals mx plus b you integrate, you're going to get a quadratic. Same thing back here. If this is a constant, that's linear. If this is linear, that has to be quadratic, and then it fits everything. Again, there's no changing of the slope. There's no point of inflection because there's no change in concavity here. The slope here is always positive. It's always concave up. This is where the derivative goes from negative to positive, right? If you did like a sign chart here for the derivative, always keep the derivative. At that x value, this is a sign chart for f prime. There's negative and then positive. Down and then up. This is a minimum. Matches exactly what this would have said using like more of a first derivative test idea. Okay. All right, let's do a harder one. Okay, how about these two guys? All right, and again, you might want to refer to your helpful hints, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, bingo. Derivatives are zero here and here. Let's figure out what they are, maxes or mins. Okay, so again, I'm looking at the graph of the derivative. So the derivative is positive, and then the derivative is negative, and the derivative is positive. What's a positive derivative? A positive derivative means the function's increasing, then decreasing, and then increasing. If it's increasing and then decreasing, this must be a max. So I'm going to write the little word max here and min here. Again, this is a negative derivative. We're looking at the graph of the derivative, and it's negative because it's below the axis. And then this is a positive derivative up here because it's above the x-axis. Max and then min. So I'm just going to put a dot up here at the same x value. I don't know where the max is. The max could be here or here. I just know it's a maximum at this x value. So just go ahead and put a dot somewhere. Doesn't matter really where. This is some minimum value. I don't know. The minimum could be here. It could be way down here, but I know it has to occur at that x value. I'm going to slap it right there. All right. So I know that the function goes up, then goes down, and then goes back up because I know the derivative is positive, negative, positive. Again, if you're thinking like a first derivative test idea, you know at these two x values, whatever they are, right, these two dots here and here, that's where the derivative is equaling to zero. And you know the derivative is positive, and then negative, and then positive. Function goes up, function goes down, function goes up. Sweet. I have a good idea with the function. Now let's look at the concavity of the function. What do you know? Well, let's bring in the purple. This is the point in which the slope of the derivative, the slope of the derivative is negative and then positive. Again, I'm not looking at the derivative. I'm looking at the slope of the derivative, which is the second derivative. So the second derivative is negative and then positive. Let's do a sign chart for that guy. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want. This is, this was looking at the derivative, f prime. This is looking at the second derivative, which is the slope of the graph. Somewhere in the middle there. The slope of the graph goes from negative to positive. So concave down, concave up. So at this point, now I'm going to make a little bit mark in red at this x value, somewhere, let's say, there. I, again, I don't know if it's there, there, there. I don't know where it is on this line. I just know that the x value has to be such that that's when my function changes from concave down to concave up. And now I'm pretty much done. I know what happens. I know that there has to be a maximum here. There has to be a minimum here. And this has to be where it changes concavity. That's where the second derivative goes from negative to positive, right? The slope of the derivative changes. And so we bust that out. Start anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. Let's start right here. We don't know the y value unless you're given more information. And it's increasing concave down. Then it's de decreasing, still concave down. Oh, oh, at this point, now it changes to a smile, concave up. Start smiling, and at that point, it's concave up still, but then it's going to start increasing. And it looks something like that. All right, let's give another check. What is, what does it appear as though the second, or the first derivative is? Doesn't it look like it's some positive quadratic? 
it looks like it. I mean, it might not be, but what we're looking at surely looks quadratic. So what do you think the function looks like? Your function better be the integral of a quadratic, right? The accumulation of a quadratic better be some cubic function. Think of the power rule. What are you going to take a derivative of to get a quadratic? A cubic function. What does this look like? A cubic function. It actually looks like a positive cubic function because the positive, if you have a positive cubic and take a derivative, you get a quadratic. So our whole goal of what we know exists. It matches with our first derivative and second derivative knowledge, and it matches with the graph. Again, looking at f prime, f prime is um, positive, function going up. Derivative is negative, function going down. Derivative is positive, function going up. Okay, the slope here is negative, concave down. Change, slope is positive, concave up. Everything matches. We're going to do the same thing here. It just it takes us a little longer just because this was more complicated, but I'm going to follow the same procedure. The first thing I'm going to mark are these guys, the derivatives of zero or the derivative not existing if you needed to. Okay. I know those are maxes and mins in this case. The derivative, let's look at the derivative again. Again, you don't have to do this right side. If you can do this part in your head, rock and roll. But I think this might be helpful for some of you just starting out. These are the three points that correspond to these points. Okay, the derivative is below the axis. We're looking at the graph of the derivative. So here it's negative, positive, back to negative, back to positive. If you have a derivative, again, this is the derivative. If you know that the derivative is negative and then positive, that means the function is going down and then up. Down and then up. Min, max, min. They just keep alternating. Down and then up. Up and then back down, maximum. Down and then back up. And again, down, how do I know it's going down? Meaning the function's going down because the derivative is negative. How do I know the derivative is negative? Because it's below the x-axis. This is where the derivative is negative. I'm looking at the graph of the derivative. So let's put some dots in here. This is some minimum value. Again, I don't know how to make this. So I'm just going to slap it anywhere I want. Let's put the minimum there. Let's put some maximum up here. Let's say then the, the other minimum is way down here. All right, now let's look at the second derivative. Whew. Second derivative, tough. Right here, that's where the second derivative is equaling to zero. Remember, the slope here is zero. The slope of the derivative is the second derivative. And then the slope here, can't positive see that you can see that that's purple. Those are the points of inflection. Again, you don't know where they are vertically, but you know at that x value, the function has to have a point of inflection. Okay, so the function is going to be going down and then up. And let's say, I don't know, right there. And then we also know the point of inflection, we'll say right there maybe. There's another point of inflection. And now we know everything. Again, we know that the second derivative has two points of inflection, here and here, okay? We're talking about this x value and this x value, okay? The second derivative is the slope. The slope goes from positive to a negative slope. Remember, a negative slope on the graph is the second derivative back to a positive slope. So now it's Smiling, frowning, smiling, concave up, concave down, concave up. So let's draw that graph. It's decreasing, concave up. So it's smiling down to this point. Start wherever you want. Let's start here. Smiling down to that point. Now increasing up to this maximum, but change concavity from smiling to frown. So a nice smooth smile to frown, you're still frowning concave down, but then you're going down to this minimum, going down, concave down, but at this point, we're gonna go back to concave up, still going down, smiling, and now still smiling, but then going up forever, okay? 
Okay, so we're pretty much done with this graph. Um, so we used the first derivative and the second derivative because if you, if you have a graph of the derivative, you have information about the second derivative. The second derivative is telling you about concave up and concave down. It's telling us smile, frown, smile, all right. How did we know that? The second derivative is the slope of the derivative. Look at the slope here. Again, the slope of the blue, positive, negative, positive. That's what told us this information. That's telling us that the function better be smiling, frowning, smiling. Smiling, frowning, smiling. And I know that it changes concavity at those x values. The zeros of the derivative, well, those are likely the mins and maxes. I identify that the function, that the derivative, blue, is negative, positive, negative, positive. They gave me those. That means the function's going down, then up, then down, and then up. And I know when to change from a smile to a, to a frown because of the second derivative. And so I've graphed a really close, again, you don't know these y values. This could be way down here and way up here and way maybe shallow here. But I know these x values have to match. This has to match. This zero has to match there. This zero has to match. And again, I'm grading this. I'm looking, I'm looking to make sure that those match. Uh, this has to have the same x value as this. That change of concavity has to be where the function changes. Uh, this has to be the same x value as this. Has to be the change. Okay? So you can kind of take a look at all of those things and make sure you're matched up um, pretty well. And again, just thinking about this, what does the first derivative look like? The first derivative looks like a cubic, right? The derivative looks like, if you want to remind yourself, a cubic function looks like this. Well, what do you think the function should look like? Well, it's a quartic, meaning it looks something like that. Right, and so it matches up, right? We know that the derivative of this better be a cubic. We're not positive it's a cubic, but at least it looks like a cubic, and so the function better look like this. Okay, hopefully that helped um, give you some examples of graphing the function from the derivative. Again, I kind of follow the same steps every single time. My helpful hints are right here. The first thing I do is establish where the derivative is equal to zero, figure out whether they're maxes and mins, then look at whether the function's increasing or decreasing, and then start looking at the slope. Again, if the slope changes, that's the point of inflection, and then match up all those x values by putting little bitty dots, and then draw a nice smooth curve through them all. Okay, hopefully this helps you uh, being able to sketch some graphs.